to distinguish this from my top 210 science fiction books list, my favorite books, these are the top 10 books for how the story stayed with me that I think about the most. While the category is not a top 10 best or favorite books, these are all books that I strongly recommend to science fiction fans. Number 10 is Mirror Dance by Lois McMaster Buhold, published in 1994. I could put the full Verkozigan saga here, but I'm gonna limit myself to the one that's the most memorable, and that's Mirror Dance. This novel can be read alone despite it being book eight of a series. Miles Verkozigan is one of the most compelling characters in any space opera, and this book has two of him, sort of. The story is immediately captivating as it features Mark, Miles' sort of brother. Mark's actually a clone of Miles, he was created from DNA stolen from Miles, and as part of a nefarious plot, he was raised to be a replacement for Miles. What Behold does with these two characters is brilliant. It's deeply surprising and emotional. Mark has always been raised to be Miles, but who's Mark underneath all of that? Miles' biography is even more wild. He was born with disability after a botched attempt to assassinate his mother resulted in him being born prematurely. He overcame the limits of his disability and a lot of childhood trauma to become a brilliant military mind. Forget everything that you think you know about evil twin tropes. Behold will pull you up close and personal with these two men and you'll hang on their every action. The book twists and turns and it's full of surprises. This book might blow your mind. And these two characters? will definitely stay with you. Number 9, The Game Players of Zahn by M.A. Forrester, published in 1977. This is an excellent read that might not make many top 10 lists, but it definitely occupies space in the book section of my brain. Highly detailed world building, a compelling main character, and empathy evoking supporting cast characters are what make this so memorable. The setting is a future dystopian Earth. Think Orwellian, Kafka-esque, Bruner-esque, if you want to assume a mood. On this future Earth exists the Lair. These beings are the not quite intended result of advancement and experimentation in bioengineering. The Lair were not super beings, as was perhaps intended, and humanity would just assume get rid of the mistake. The Lair would prefer to not be eliminated. Much of the plot evolves out of the cross-species conflict. It's good to go in knowing to expect that the value of the first half of the book, albeit slow-paced, is the extensive world building and character development. Expect big info dumps, Forrester examines political systems, gender, society, and culture, and imagines characters that feel real to the created world. There's so much detail to be had, and it really pays off as its value is recognized in the speedier thriller figure in the final third. This is the second book of a series, but it can be read alone as it's the first chronologic. Eight is Star of Danger by Marion Zimmer Bradley, published in 1965. As a young child, this was the first book that I bought or my parents bought for me because of me being drawn to the cover. I'd ended up reading only a few chapters and then I forgot about it for decades. Something in those chapters stuck with me, the darkness of the world, the almost adult feeling child characters, and the odd political standoff between two main factions. Several years back, I thought about this book, but I had no idea what it was. I must have been about eight or nine when I got it. And I'm thinking, what was that book with the blue diamond on it? So I used the internet, probably pre-Goodreads, obviously pre-Goodreads, and estimated that it must have been something that came out in the 70s and that it had a blue diamond or a blue star on the cover. I eventually located it. I read it. I was taken by it. Soon after, I read Ursula Le Guin's The Left Hand of Darkness. The two books have a lot in common as there's a trek over hostile terrain on a foreign planet and a culture clash. In Star of Danger, a teenage boy, Larry, the son of a diplomat from Earth or the Terran Empire, accompanies his father on his new posting on the planet Darkover. Larry has learned a bit of the Darkoven language, and being a teenage boy, he ignores his strict father and goes off to explore. This will have political consequences for him and his father that Larry is mostly naive to, Larry becomes friends with a local dark oven boy from a prestigious family, and events conspire that lead to Larry and his friend being on the run from the bad guys. Like Left Hand of Darkness, cultural differences are on display during the chase and they'll need to be overcome. This is a book that I'll read again because what sticks with me isn't so much the characters in the story, but rather how the setting and the adventure made me feel. I found out only recently in the last few years that the author, Bradley, was a deeply troubled individual and implicated in terrible crimes. Honorable mentions, I'm going to go with The Stories of Your Life and Others by Ted Chiang. I'm not going to include this in the official list because it's short stories, so that doesn't count, right? Dune by Frank Herbert, uh, Foundation by Isaac Asimov, the whole Foundation series. I'm not including those because they are very obvious and I've talked about them elsewhere. 
And while they do stay with me, they easily could be on this list. I'm just gonna put them at like number 11 or 12 and therefore they're on, they're on the honorable mentions list. At number seven is Neuromancer by William Gibson, published in 1984. Neuromancer is arguably the most famous cyberpunk novel and it's credited with putting the subgenre on the map. Case is a down on his luck hacker, mostly a slave to some toxic booby traps that are installed in his body. He's given a second chance by a former notable military leader, Armitage. Join the team that's planning to access and retrieve the mega artificial intelligence known as Neuromancer and will free you from the constant toxic death threat. Also on the team are Molly, the muscle of the group, Peter, the holograms illusions expert, and the one who's really pulling the strings, Wintermute, another advanced and dangerous AI. Quite simply, this book is just as vivid to me now as it was when I read it. This is storytelling so vivid, it's like watching a movie inside of my head. I can see pictures and scenes from this movie as if they actually happened or as if these pictures actually exist. I don't know how Gibson does it. To anybody new to this book, I say, allow the scenery to just wash over you and envelop you. This book is an experience like no other. Number six is Diaspora by Greg Egan, published in 1997. This one's interesting because you can also put it in the cyberpunk category and it feels nothing like any other cyberpunk that you've read. This is also space opera and it's space opera like no other. Diaspora is one of the most interesting works of science fiction in existence. Egan imagines three paths that humanity has taken in the far future on an about to be dead earth. There are the fleshers, Basically, humans who have evolved and with the help of some amazing biotech enhancements can adapt to the changing Earth environment. There are Gleisner robots, robot bodies that you can download your consciousness into, eliminating any need for inferior flesh and bones. And then the stars of the show, the citizens. Citizens exist as data on what are known as policies, which you can just imagine are like hard drives. These data-driven beings can imagine themselves as anything that they wish among a virtual reality landscape of their choosing. These citizens will leave the Earth and launch out into space beyond the galaxy and perhaps multiple dimensions. Egan imagines far into the future and far beyond the universe as we know it, and it's impossible for many of his ideas to ever leave your mind. Number five is Kindred by Octavia Butler, published in 1979. This was such a formative read for me. First, this introduced me to the work of Octavia Butler and led me to an obsession with reading much more of her brilliant work. This was also the first fiction book that I read that dealt directly with the injustice of slavery in the South and provoked me to think deeper about issues of privilege than I had previously. Because of the profound impact that this book had on me at a young age, it sticks with me today. In Kindred, a woman living in 1970s California repeatedly and mysteriously finds herself transported to the antebellum South. Her first interaction on one of these trips is with the white son of a vicious slave owner. The story is riveting and unputdownable from start to finish. Number four is Hyperion by Dan Simmons, published in 1989. What still sticks with me? The Priest Tale. This is one of the most haunting stories I've ever read in science fiction. Hyperion follows several pilgrims on their trek to the planet Hyperion. All of these characters have connections to the time tombs of Hyperion or the mysterious bladed creature, the Shrike, that roams time and space in the vicinity of the tombs. Hyperion is all over the sci-fi subgenres maps with pilgrims tales that are in some cases cyberpunk, others are military sci-fi, others are space opera, others horror, and more. The one that consistently sits with me is the story of the priest who finds a cruciform of some organic form grafted to his body. The further he strays from the site he was blemished with the cruciform, the more his agony increases. The writing throughout the novel and its sequel are excellent, but for me, this first tale in the first book stands out as something very unique. At number three should be no surprise, it's Dahlgren by Samuel R. Delaney, published in 1975. I recently posted a review of this novel and you can find it on my channel. Those who've watched the review already know, I've called this the best book that I ever read. I continue to stand by that. If this was a top 10 favorite novels list, this would of course be at number one. I'll never forget how this book made me feel. In Dahlgren, the character Kid, called Kid because he can't even remember his name, experiences the city of Bologna in the aftermath of some unknown devastating event that has mostly shut off the city from the outside world. Kid falls in with a gang, the Scorpions, and meets dozens of stimulating characters. Kid trying to make sense of the strange occurrences in the city, as well as trying to understand who he is, who he was, or who he wants to be, 
is page turning for nearly 800 pages. I regularly crave to revisit this city with Kid and all of his interesting friends and acquaintances. Number two is a twofer, and that's Ender's Game and Speaker for the Dead by Orson Card. I couldn't decide which of these two to represent the Ender's series, so I went with both. Any time that I come across a sympathetic character in a book, I compare them to Ender Wigan. In Ender's Game, prodigy Ender Wigan is monitored all of his young life to eventually be recruited to battle school in space with hopes that he or some other child prodigy will emerge to be the one, the one to lead humanity to victory against the alien buggers. Ender bullied and outcast as a child, including his time in battle school, and exploited by the adults around him is an astonishing person with a brilliant mind. In the sequel, Speaker for the Dead, set thousands of years in the future, he is a reviled historical figure, Ender the Xenocide, who now spends his time speaking about the lives of the deceased while mostly hiding his identity and using his given name, Andrew. There's no character in science fiction that sticks with me more than Ender Wigan. I think anyone who's ever felt different than others will relate to this character and root for him. And number one on the list is Brave New World by Aldous Huxley, published in 1932. Science fiction lit is littered with dystopian tales with striking similarities to our present realities. Books like Fahrenheit 451, The Wind-Up Girl, The Space Merchants, 1984, and others are all great novels with varying degrees of prescience for things happening political, sociologically, economically, ecologically in our present. While these all could be candidates for today's list, the one that sticks with me the most is Huxley's Brave New World, the overwhelming theme of humanity obsessed with contentment and slave to consumption, is the most profound of what I call the warning novels of dystopian fiction. It's hard to not see the evidence of Huxley's imagining of a world too lethargic and complacent to contest or even notice the abuse of power wielded by the state. In Brave New World, imagined is a future in which humans are grown in labs and hatcheries and conditioned to think and act in certain ways, generally emotionless, and are bred into castes. Individuality doesn't exist. Everyone belongs to everyone else. Emotional response is addressed by both the initial genetic, chemical, and hormonal manipulation and behavioral conditioning, and later, more acutely, the use of psychotropic drugs called Soma. Early in the story, we follow Bernard Marx, an alpha, and he's one of the few who's not quite content with this stay-in-your-lane society. He travels with his love interest, Lenina, to a savage reservation where they witness a more basic or uncivilized way of living. They meet John the Savage at this reservation, and they invite him to experience their brave new world. The experiment is less than successful, and John rages against promiscuity, the absence of art and religion, and the propensity of Soma. The work is a satire, exaggerating elements of society that Huxley finds ridiculous or dangerous, big government, overbearing and inflated institutions, eugenics, and sexual inhibition. Thank you for watching. I'm Michael Everts, and this is Fit to be Read. Savagery, savagery, pill. I can take this brave new world. Don't be